Hi, so I'm Douglas here with VMworld TV this year uh, with Chiru and uh, Sean. Hello. Hey, Douglas. So one of the big announcements, I guess uh, the biggest announcement at least today is uh, this is the last version of ESX 4.1 uh, that's going to have ESX and not just ESXi. Can you give us the full story there? Absolutely, yeah, this is really, really big news. Um, the big announcement actually came out a little while ago, which was with the release notes of the ESXi 4.1 release. So when VCA 4.1 went out the door, uh, we announced to the world that this would be the last release that will ship with both the ESX and the ESXi hypervisor architectures both supported. The next major release of vSphere will be exclusively based on the ESXi hypervisor architecture. So really now is a great time for customers to start migrating to ESXi. All right, great. So I've got a couple of questions. So we're moving strictly to ESXi. I got to admit, I'm a command line guy. So when it comes to troubleshooting, I mean, really, ESXi? Yeah, absolutely. Troubleshooting on ESXi. A lot of people may not know this, but ESXi does have a fully functional shell within it, which is targeted specifically at that troubleshooting and maintenance use case. We realize that sometimes things do go south. Things don't always work out the way that you want them to. And once you do end up in a situation like that, significant break fix scenario, we do have the tools within the ESXi shell, or tech support mode as it may be known to a lot of customers, for you to go in there, figure out what's wrong, fix it, and then drop out of the shell. All right, great, that makes sense. So um, from a scripting perspective also, I'm used to traditional ESX scripting. Um, what's that look like with ESXi? Well, I think the main thing to realize is that with ESXi, you can actually do a lot more. Um, we have these remote tools, uh, VCLI is the main one, as well as PowerCLI. Those are two remote scripting environments. And the beauty there is that you can do a lot of the same things that you could do with the service console. But when you have a remote scripting environment, you can actually have one script that will then operate across all your hosts. So you can also think of, think of it as doing scripting at scale. So you can have, a, 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 for example, a single command that will go out and query all your hosts and get all the information back, something like that. Power CLI in particular is very powerful at doing that. So in many ways, it's a much more superior scripting environment than what you had with the service console. All right, that sounds pretty exciting. So, um, you know, I sat in your session, it was really good, by the way, and one of the things I noticed you said was uh, about patching, that ESXi requires substantially less patching. Can you give me a little background on that? Absolutely. So one of the really key differences between the ESX, the legacy architecture, and ESXi, is that ESXi removes the console operating system. This is a massive chunk of code. We did a study with, uh, with the ESXi versus ESX 3.5 release series, and we found that ESXi, because it removes so much software, which is unnecessary for running virtual machines, required one-tenth the amount of patching of the equivalent ESX system. That's a huge savings. So if you look at the processes that customers have to go through in order to update those hosts, ensure that those patches get applied cleanly, qualify them, roll them out into production, this is a massive, massive savings. I should also emphasize as well that the removal of all of that code means that ESXi is much smaller and much more secure, never mind just the patching benefits. All right, well, it sounds pretty exciting. Uh, I think I'm going to try to catch some of the guys leaving your session now and uh, see what they think. Thanks a lot, guys. Hi, Nathan. How was the ESXi session for you? It was good. I learned a lot about uh, the transition from ESX to ESXi, and I think there's going to be a lot of uh, good information in that to help me uh, get it completed. Great. And do you feel a bit more comfortable after the session? Definitely. There was uh, a lot of good information about uh, the command line interfaces and the power CLI things that uh, I didn't know that were even available in ESX, so knowing that they're going to be there in ESXi, it's helpful. Uh, hi, Joseph. So you were just in the ESXi session? Yes. What'd you think? It was a great session, I mean, particularly for me, because we're in the process now of upgrading to 4.1, uh, and we're running ESX. Uh, we know that uh, ESX uh, 4.1 is, uh, vFear 4.1 is the last one supporting uh, uh, ESX with the service console, and we have to go to ESXi. So it's key that I came in here today, gave us all the uh, key features that I need to know about moving forward with ESXi. And uh, because I'm here now and listening to what I heard, I will change our 4.1 upgrade to include converting all of our hosts to ESXi and take this opportunity to move on to ESXi. I'm not scared of it anymore. I'm not scared of losing the service console. I know that there's plenty of troubleshooting features out there with the VCLI uh, that I can do to manage and support. And uh, 
uh, maintain our servers. So it was a great session. I'm glad I'm uh, glad I attended.